or you owe the money. Turn that on. Can I ask please. you some questions? Turn that on. Journalism, news, fake news, always a hot topic. And when a colleague writes a book, you bring that colleague in to talk about the history of journalism, history of his career, and some fascinating stories. My friend, uh, Matthew Schwartz, is here to talk about his book, Confessions of an Investigative Reporter. Matthew, it has been a hundred years, and it's so good to see you. It's great to see you, Lisa. Thanks for having me on. So, of course, Matthew has had a 40-plus year career in journalism. He has always been an investigative reporter, a dream job of mine that, unfortunately, I never got to do. But you were always at the forefront of, you know, the hard-hitting interviews, finding the fraud, investigating things, getting the interviews. Tell me about why you chose to write this book. You know, Lisa, I had people coming up to me the last 20 or so years of my career who would see the stories on the air, the investigations, and they'd say, isn't there more to that? Or, wow, how did you feel about getting attacked by that guy? Are you walking away? No, I want you, why don't you stop here for a second and talk to me? Would you read it? No, you don't have to put it in my face like that, though. Well, you're putting this in my face. Or, how did you find out about that fraud? You need to write a book and, and say things you didn't have time to tell on TV or it was inappropriate to tell, your personal feelings. So I started taking notes about 15 years ago for a book. And I never thought I'd write it till I retired. But then somebody gave me the best advice. She said, write a, an author, said, write a page a day. So during the last couple of years of my career at KBOA, the NBC station in Tucson, I started writing a page almost every day before work. And then, and then it got to this. Um, and, you know, a lots of journalists write stories about, you know, their time in the business and their the memorable stories. I mean, there's so many. I don't know how over a 40-year career you could pick just these. I mean, I'm sure you could write more novels about all the stories. But um, I'm particularly interested in your early career and the stuff you did in New York and you interviewed the, the son of Sam. I mean, talk about how that particular interview shaped your, your vision and your view and about a specific line that your news director tried to get you to put in the story. Yeah. You know, I, this was long before the term fake news was coined. And in 2002, uh, I got an interview in an upstate New York prison with David Berkowitz, a.k.a. the son of Sam, the serial killer. And I showed the raw footage when I got back to the station to three news managers. And the news director stopped the tape. He said, wait a minute, your pen is on the table between you and the son of Sam. I said, yeah. He goes, well, weren't you afraid he was going to pick you up, pick the pen up and stab you with it? And I said, that, is that a joke? And not a very funny joke, but this is like 25 years after the murders and the guy was born again and there's two corrections officers standing by. I said, no, it never occurred to me. So he said, well, I think you should say that in the script. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I walk out of there so depressed, this great interview. He hadn't given an interview in a while. And I walk out of there and I screen the video, Lisa. I come back with a really strong script, I thought. And he changed I did not have any line in there about thinking about my own personal thoughts and getting stabbed by him with my pen. And the news director inserted a line in the final script saying my producer was worried that Berkowitz would pick up my pen and stab me with it. And I'm like, I was, you know, I fought, but, you know, I couldn't quit. At the time I had, you know, a young family and a big mortgage and I couldn't quit, but I was so downtrodden. It's, you know, it's not the biggest lie in the world, but a lie is a lie. And it just bothered me telling a lie knowingly on television. And the thing is, Lisa, my producer was not even in the prison. He was not at the interview. It, it was sensationalism. Yeah. At the time, Fox had bought the station and they were changing, I thought, the news style, the writing into type, kind of a tabloid. And it was not necessary. And it wasn't true. And it just bothered the hell out of me. Even though, you know, it wasn't the biggest thing. It doesn't matter. A lie's a lie. And it just bothered me. But the interview, you know, made a lot of news in New York. And of course, I didn't want it to be a, uh, a you know, big party, a pity party for Berkowitz. So I interviewed the cop who arrested him. I interviewed parents of the murder victims. And so I think it was a really strong piece. It's one of the most memorable I think I've done in my career. I think especially now in this day and age, and it's different even from when I started, so I can imagine it's, it's significantly different from when you started, but there are so many 
um, positives to journalism and, you know, things like what you're talking about, you know, changing laws for the better, making things safer for people, keeping the community safe from people that have a pill mill, you know, all of these things are the positive side of it. Can you just kind of, as we wrap, talk about from beginning to end, kind of the change in attitude towards journalism and how you hope this, this book will either help cement that change or give people a different perspective? I hope when people read this book, Lisa, besides being entertained uh, and amazed at some of these inside stories that I couldn't tell on TV, the stories behind the stories, I hope they say, you know what, there's some investigative reporters out there, not just in my time, I mean, I only retired in June, but still today, there are some solid investigative reporters out there that aren't telling fake news. There are fake news websites, but I don't think there are fake, there's fake news from say a whole organization. People make mistakes in our business like any other business, but I think people will appreciate uh, a true investigative reporter and some of these stories about how we ended up helping people. And I I write in the book that a lot of people who complain about so-called fake news, but when they have a personal problem and they need help in their community, maybe they got ripped off by a contractor, whatever, who do they contact? The, The reporter. Yeah, I did a lot of consumer reports. You know, you do investigations in summer, you know, helping Mrs. Jones get something, a bill, you know, fixed that she got ripped off on. So I say, well, how come they call reporters if we're so guilty of fake news? And they say, well, not everybody does fake news. That's such an overblown term. I can't stand it. People make mistakes. There's no big conspiracy. We, we met and tried very hard to be fair whenever we had editorial meetings on all sides, get all sides of the story. Well, the book is fascinating. It's always interesting as a journalist myself to read the stories of of those who have had long careers and and have been successful because being successful and having a long career is a feat in our business, as you know. So, Matthew, it's great to see you. The book, Confessions of an Investigative Reporter by Matthew Schwartz, available everywhere, right? Yep, and you can look uh, at MatthewSchwartzBook.com. It has tons of information there. Of course, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, et cetera. All right. Good to see you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Thank you.